Hey all, Andy here, helping you build a career you love. First live show of 2024. Those 130 I did in 2023 are all in the books. The, the counter starts over at zero. Great to have you here with me for number one. If you're here live, if you're watching this on the recording, welcome to you too. I've got a fun, what I think is a fun show on 10 major principles. I think they're good maneuvers to set yourself right for 2024 and beyond. These are tips from my life and things that I do that always seem to help me get things to break my way. So I've got a fun uh, fun list for you today. Uh, I have a lot of stories or examples from my life. I did that on, on purpose because I want you to know what I do. And as I always say, take what you like, leave the rest but whatever you do, make sure you get in the chat and say hi. Let me know where you're watching from. Put some question marks in front of your questions because we're going to do a healthy Q&A just like we do at every one of my shows. And as you might have seen, my, my new book is, uh, it came out Christmas Day for pre-order. It was a surprise to me. I'll tell you about that later in the Q&A. Kiru, what's up? LK, how are you? John, Harry, Felicia, Peter, Jose, Steven, Dana. Oh, you guys are great. Stephanie, Wendy, MK, what's up? Michael Moore, how you doing? Kristen, Vippen, Kara's always got my back. Give her a shout out for Happy New Year to her too and to you. So today, this is packed. I want to run through, uh, I, I, I thought over the, the holiday break, how I wanted to come out in 2024. Yesterday, if you're here with me live, it's a Wednesday, not my usual normal live office hours day, but but we all we had a video come out yesterday, five tips to uh, better job search results or faster job search results in 2024. I also wanted in the first week to give you a lesson on things to do in your career, in your life, ways to look at how to get more enjoyment, more production, uh, and, 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 and really lower the stress too, because who doesn't, who doesn't want more of that? So I hope you're, I hope you're going to enjoy this. Uh, let's get right out. Right out with number one, I got 10 of these. And the first thing that I want to say is that, and I, I learned this lesson pretty early in my life, and I'm sure a lot of you recognize this, and 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 the, 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 the step in and of itself is not a hard concept to grasp, but to do it is really, really hard in the world we live in today. And if you want to reach any great, heights in your life, anything, personal goals, professional goals, family goals, relationship goals, anything that you want to achieve. The higher up you go, the more you're going to have to give up. It's just true because if you're trying to attain very, very high goals or achieve something that is of deep value and great reward, you're going to need to sacrifice a lot. And one of the things that I do on a literally daily basis is I cut. I cut stuff out of my life. So addition by subtraction. And what do I mean? This could be things you do. And I'm not even talking about the fatty stuff you might have in your life. Like if you're wasting a lot of time on social media, social media is great. I'm on it every day. I watch TV. I watch TV every day, right? Like there's a lot of things like that that might be fatty or might be entertainment or levity. But I want you to look at your life holistically. This could be people to cut relationships. It could be things you're doing in your business that are a waste of time. You might not know they're a waste of time, which means you have to be paying attention, but it could be anything. And so every day uh, when I wake up and I go through, uh, I go through a, a process in the morning, something of a schedule, and um, depending on what part of the year it is and whether I'm writing a book or not or, or, or what I have going, usually there's some type of focus practice and meditation that I go through. There's also a portion of my morning that I allocate to what I call excellence planning. My excellence planning, if you're not familiar with any of that, is I ask myself five questions that promote stimulation. They stimulate my ideas, and I think about what can I do to better serve my customers, better serve my community, better market my services, become more well-known and build the brand, uh, in, internal systems that I operate, how do I make them more efficient? But the fifth question that I ask myself is, what should I stop doing? And I might stop something permanently, I might stop something temporarily. So years back, 
I was running my podcast as I am now. And my, I'm talking about my audio podcast, not my YouTube channel. And I was getting busier and busier as the years were going on. And I, I, I don't have a big team. And I, I do have some people who help. A lot of you are familiar with Kara, who works with me full time. We have some other part time people who help us in different capacities. Basically, I was loading up the podcast and I didn't think it took too long. And it really doesn't. But I was looking for things to cut. And I thought, well, if people want to get my lessons, they could look. They could listen to me on YouTube. And, and so I, I had to cut that. And I, I, I was learning how to upload YouTube videos. And, and, and I was listening to people that were talking to me and teaching me all the intricacies of all the different settings that I should do to better optimize and search engine optimize and index my videos to become discovered more and so on. And so what I, what I had done over the years was, well, I stopped the podcast. I just stopped uploading the audio podcast because I needed to save myself time. And there wasn't really much of a difference. And I, I stopped tinkering with all the YouTube settings. I don't edit my videos. They just go up. You don't need to see a 10 second trailer in the front of my video or a lot of pretty graphics to get the lesson. And then all the, all the bells and whistles inside behind the scenes, it really doesn't make a whole lot of difference. It truly doesn't. And I know that because I went through iterations to evaluate it. So I want you to think about what are the things in your life that you can get rid of. It could be clothes. It could be people. It could be anything. But I would start getting rid of, rid of the clutter in your life because, because to me, to me, and I will tell you this, I genuinely believe this. So I know some of you are going to disagree, but your calendar and what's on it to me is more important than your bank account because this to me dictates this. One is dependent on the other. This one over here on the uh, on whatever that is to, to your left or right or whatever it is, is 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 a byproduct of this. I mean, aside from those people who inherit a lot of money, but I can alter my position at anything by focusing on my calendar. What goes on it should be feeding my psyche. It should be feeding my health. It should be feeding my business. If it should be feeding my development and so on. So I want you to I want you to think about this. Is going to be really important now. I, as part of this first step, I do want you to cut, remove it. You can bring it back if you think you need it, but I want to make sure that it's something that you truly value and is bringing value to your life. Now, one of the other things that I want to tell you that I do also as part of my overall focusing strategy that I have in my entire life, meaning what do I invite into my life, into my business, into my friendships, into my relationships, the commitments, anything talk on my podcast Andy can you review my book Andy can you can you I think we should try and and do this new promotion or should I create a new workshop or it could be self-inflicted and so one of the things that I do to ensure that I, I get rid of stuff so I, I cut it out but the second thing is once you cut it out you need to keep it out and as part of my focusing strategy there are four elements I look at Generally speaking, I'm my own personal gatekeeper to the fact that nothing gets into my life. Everything that comes at me is an automatic no to begin with. Now, don't get me wrong. There are a lot of things that I do with my wife and other people around me that I want to support. But basically, most of the things that come at me are an automatic no because I would rather go from a no to a yes than a yes to a no. And we get stressed out more because of the things we say yes to in our lives than the things we say no to. It's easier to recover from that customer you turn away or that obligation you don't take on than it is to recover from an obligation that you do take on or a customer you do take on that wasn't right for you or a friendship that you build maybe that wasn't right for you. So here's what I go through. I think of things in four elements. I call them my itties. Uh, well, if, if, if you pre-order my new book, this is in there, but I'm going to give you a sneak peek of what's in the focus section. I look at these four things. I look at, is what's coming at me part of my true identity? Like, is this who I want to be? Now, I get a lot of requests, for example, for speaking engagements. Now, in and of itself, on the surface, that is part of who I am. I'm a teacher. I'm a coach. I'm a trainer, an educator. But, and that's a vehicle to, to, to do that. And at different points in my life, I actually spoke more at events, at conferences. I spoke more to companies. I did more private webinars and things like that. I don't do that much anymore, primarily because I have to look at my calendar, right? There are things I needed to cut 
which are sometimes those things. And even though it's part of my identity, it still doesn't make the list because of the number of other obligations and some of these other things that I consider. There's a community element to what I do. I really consider this to be a social support mechanism. So if my wife wants to do something, I don't automatically say no to everything she asks me. Let's not be extreme here. I look at, is this a way to support her? So when she says, I want to run a marathon on October 6th, I say, okay, where is it? And let me put that on my calendar because I'm going to be there to support you. That's a very quick yes kind of thing. But you also are my community. Is what I'm doing best serving them as it relates to all these other things? This third element, ability, is what I'm being asked to do actually going to enable me to build a skill that will be vital for my business. Okay, this is, this is really important because it's and and and. Is what somebody's asking me vital for me to build the skill and also going to contribute to my business? If somebody asks me to speak, while that's a skill that I will help me, I could get practice talking to you or jump on a stage if I wanted to and practice that skill. And it's not really going to move my, the needle on my business as big as sitting with you every Thursday talking to you for a couple of hours kind of thing. It's true. I've evaluated this. I've determined this. I see what moves the needle. So is this going to enable me professionally? And then is what I'm being asked actually necessary? So I want you to think about this. Is what you're doing really is it really necessary? Ask yourself in the microcosm that is your business, in the microcosm meaning that is your role, in the microcosm that is your, your work to your customer relationships, those kinds of things. They might be nice to have, but are they absolute necessities in this world? Okay, that's number one. We got 10 of these. Some are going to be longer than others. Okay, number two is I, um, I will tell you as somebody who's been working for 35 years, that you can have a pretty good career being good at your job. But if you want to have a great career, you got to work on yourself more. And so, so item number two is I want you to work you more. So what, is, what, is, what does that mean exactly? Well, there's my business that I, I can work on and I could build training products and all those kind of things and I need to I could do my job, serve my customers, or I can practice and practice and practice and identify the skills that are vital for me to actually accelerate my ability to run my business, better serve my customers, better sell my services, and so on. And I'm not talking about go out and buy a bunch of self-help books. I love reading, and I do read a lot of self-improvement-styled books. The Zebra Code is a career self-improvement kind of book that I just wrote. Okay, so, so I'm not talking just about that. I'm talking about being proactive in identifying what are the skills that are actually going to enable me to become better at my career or my job or shift careers if that's your prerogative. But the point is, I want you to do that proactively. I'm telling you, I believe this in my heart of hearts, you are all one skill away from doubling your salary. It's true. If you're not sure what that skill is, you, at, you tell me what you do, what level you are, and I will tell you the skill that will double your salary. Figure that out and start working it. I'm not saying you're going to grow it overnight and automatically double your salary overnight. I'm saying you are one skill away or a level of proficiency at a skill away from doubling your pay. That's how valuable these vital skills can, can actually be. Now, a big part of this and enabling you to do this is you have to do step one because you got to create space in your calendar to be able to work this stuff because a lot of times this is not going to happen between nine and five. All right, so you're going to have to do it before work, at lunch, or after work, or on the weekends where you're truly putting thoughtful time analysis and, and most importantly, repetitions in on you. So I, I, I really want you to, I really want you to, to, to focus on that. Now, now here's where I think the talk really picks up. Uh, number three is I get asked, I get asked a lot. I get asked it at these shows, but I get asked it a lot uh, privately in my coaching sessions, one-to-one -one coaching sessions. And a lot of you, I, I, I know you might chuckle when you hear me say this, but you ask me, Eddie, what's going to happen? 
And much of the time, it's what do you think are the new trends? What do you think are going to be the hot areas? What, where, are, where are things going? Can, can I get a hey in the chat? Do you ask me that a lot, right? What's going to happen? What's going to happen next? And what I, would, what I would bet I've almost never been asked is, Andy, what's never going to change? What's never going to change? Ooh, let's turn this around. Andy's ability to get the cards right. Focus on what will never change. And I'm going to be really explicit here so you get what I mean. In, you know that expression, the only constant is change? I think it's a pretty dumb expression because I could identify millions of things in this world that have never changed since billions of years ago. And the way humans behave and things that everybody wants. Are, is, there, is there any of you out there that don't want great service? Is there any of you out there that are buyers that buy anything that don't want it delivered to your front door faster? Is there any of you out there that don't want a job you're happy in? That you actually like toxic work environments or, right? To just name a few. Okay, now, why am, I, why am I pointing this out so much? Because when you, when you think about where am I going to go in my career, what am I going to do, how am I going to know that, you know, the, the goals that you set for yourself and what you want to deliver to this world and the value that you want to create, you want it to be impactful, and, and, and even, if, even if you think, Andy, I just want to go to work, collect my paycheck, and feed my family, I'm, I'm okay with that too. But, because everybody can live their life the way they want. But you still want to be happy. You still want to matter. You still want to be appreciated. And you still want to make, make this world a better place. I genuinely believe that in my heart. And so when, when I think about, like when I was thinking about what kind of business do I want to build? I want to build a bulletproof business that as long as I show up, as long as I put the effort in, as long as I care, right, put the work in, it will never go out of style. Well, Andy, um, what happens if the employment market goes down and all your job searching services, nobody's going to be able to pay for them? That's nonsense. When the market goes down and you're having a harder time finding a job, you need me more. And you're, you have acute pain that you're willing to pay to solve. To get my help. Well, Andy, what happens if the market is thriving and everybody's getting jobs very easily? They don't need your job searching services. No, then they call me because they have job offers and they want me to help them negotiate more money. Or they want, they want to do even better in their jobs so they get in my career development curriculum. The, 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 since I've been doing this in 2015 in, in, as a coach in this capacity and I started selling um, online training and coaching services in late 2016. Between 2016 and now the beginning of 2024, do you want to guess when the when I had the most attention for my online business? Anybody want to take a guess at what month that was? I won't forget it. March, end of March 2020, April 2020. I never had that many people at my weekly live shows. We never had that many customers buying our products. We never had that many people jumping into my leadership program. And all of these people apparently were losing their jobs and were freaked out and were working from home and all. Right, because they, they needed me, right? Maybe more so than they need me today. So I want you to think about all the things I just said. I'm going to give you a little story. 2023 was the greatest year of my life without like hands down, not even a close second. The only blemish on the uh, in my life was I lost one of my dogs. And it was Monday, Memorial Day, 2023. And Ginger, one of my four dachshunds, she was in a lot of pain. And to the point where I did not want to, I'm not, I wasn't going to wait till the vet opened up the next day to take her. Like I said to my wife, Linda, we got to go. I'm, I, we got, I'm bringing her to the doggy hospital and the doggy hospital that we'd gone to had moved even a little further away. So I wanted to, I wanted to figure out, I wanted to get her in there and I, I was working in the morning and I noticed as she was laying here behind me that she was shaking and this was not normal. And so I, what I did was I, I called the hospital. I called the doggy hospital. I said, Hey, uh, obviously I want to make sure you're, oh, 
you're open today. I'm assuming you are 24 seven. They said, oh, oh, of course. I said, um, you know, I, I know how these things go. I, I don't really want to sit around and wait for hours. I just want to know, is there a way to make an appointment? What's the deal? How's this work? Usually anytime we come there, it's a walk-in. She says, right, it's, it's a walk-in. However, however, if you go on our website, you can select a target time that you would like to bring the dog in among the open slots. And what we will do is put your cell phone number in there and then you tell us your address. And then what we'll do is we will send you a text when you need to get in your car. You don't even need to leave your house. I'll send you a text. We monitor traffic, distance, and so on, and we'll tell you when to come. Awesome. Okay, great. I go in. I put the thing in, get my wife, pack the dog up. You know, this is like an hour and a half later. We drive to the, to the vet hospital. I get in the hospital. We check in. Got all my stuff. Didn't have to fill out all this stuff because I filled it in online. I told him what was what. So we go and we sit down. I sit down. I look at my wife and I say, "I gotta, I gotta ask him what the what the scheduling software is that they're using because I don't care if it's a vet office, a doctor's office, or anything office. Like everybody always values their time. Whatever that is, we're gonna go home and buy stock in it." Because I need to know what that is. What's that scheduling software? Because that's a hangover from COVID, right? Where, where, where they weren't really letting people in. You had to sit in your car for any of you that have pets. So I want you to think about this. Never for the rest of my life am I ever going to want to sit in a vet waiting room. Or I value my time. It's never going to change. Ever. Ever. Think about this kind of stuff when you want to sit. Now, you might say, well, Andy, well, you know, people always want to go to nice places and, and spend money on leisure and travel and so on. Yeah, but they have to have the money to do it. So it's a conditional behavior. Saving my time is never going to be a condition of any other factor that I have in my life. Okay, who's tracking with me? All right, number three, focus on what will never change if you are going to be making decisions. Now, next thing. Who are you going to listen to? Only the right people. How are you going to know who they are? Because there's a lot of noise out there. I have told you many times, your greatest opportunities will be found in the sounds of other people's complaints. You solve their problem, you're their hero. Who are the people who are going to tell you this? Your customers. Your competition's not going to tell you this. Your friends are not going to tell you this. Other coworkers who don't know what they're doing are not going to tell you this. So I want you to pay attention. I've told you on many occasions, and for those of you that are new to my community, you might, you might not have heard this before, but one of the reasons that I love to show up every Thursday at live office hours, number one, I genuinely love doing this in this capacity, and I love being here with you, but there are many byproducts of that because every single week you are telling me what's wrong. Nobody in the world is better at doing that for me than you. Not a, not some other career coach who's trying to pump out videos and copy the, you know, the common this or that and the resume tips and interview tips and all that stuff and the stuff that I put out as well cuz I want to have it there cuz I'm building a house for you kind of thing. But your customer no one will make you faster than your customers. No one makes me faster at getting better and iterating my programs than my customers, my paying customers who see what's behind the paid wall. But the free but but you as freemium members as well who come to the shows and provide me your attention and offer me insight into the world, then I need to figure out if this is a new trend. Hey, when I started this whole business and doing recruitment and teaching and stuff. There were no one-way video interviews. Who thought of that insane thing, right? You tell me, Andy, I need help with this. How? It, right, we figured out. You're always there telling me. I'm always at the front edge of what's happening because of, of you. Listen to the right people, okay? Listen to the right people. So that's, that's, number, that's number four. Okay, this, this, might be, this might be my second favorite one on the list. I have, I have taught you that when you are doing something at any moment in time, I want you to focus on the act, focus on what you're doing. But the real value in anything that you do is what? In the echo. I say focus on the shout when you're doing it. When you're reflecting, focus on the echo. What happened? 
I did something, something happened, there's an event. When you go into a job interview, I always say, you got to make sure you let them know what happened. That was, that's what's important, right? Anybody can do the act. So I want you to know this. I'm trying to think of different ways of telling you this stuff, but every event has an offspring. Every event has an offspring. I guarantee it that all the things that move the markets to go back to this, to, to go back to focusing on what will never change, and, and people are worried about predicting the future, you will be ahead of 99.9% .9 of the people in this world not in trying to create something that only the 1% can create, right? But in actually looking for the ripple effect when something actually occurs. So I didn't know COVID was going to hit. And while I'm guessing somebody somewhere along the way in their life realized that we were going to have a pandemic again at some point, but to know what was going to happen to businesses and those kind of things could only be conditional at the moment it happened because in 1911 or 1918 or whenever these other Spanish flus and other things had happened, we didn't have the same kind of infrastructure or same kind of setup that we do now. So what's more important is how am I going to react to the offspring. So speaking of COVID, remember, remember the, I don't know if you remember, for those of you that have been following me for, for since, uh, you know, since, since way, way back when, uh, I looked for the offspring, COVID hit. It was, it was third week of March when we realized the world was starting to, to shut down, meaning we were sheltering in place and those kind of things. I went back and sat in my pottery barn, bourbon style, color, wells, spaceship chair i literally spent only 10 minutes and i mentally walked through my house and i've told this story because i knew at that moment i was going to need to scrap the content i had scheduled for the next three weeks and i was going to need to show up at live office hours the next week and tell you what was going to happen i needed you to not panic and I needed you to know wh which industries were going to get hurt and which industries I thought were going to thrive. That was not a prediction as much as it was an evaluation of the offspring of the event. So what I did was I sat in the chair. I started with this office. I got a TV on the wall. You can't see it, but it's right there. I got a right. I got the super duper. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how many K monitor this is. It's a pretty clear 27 inch monitor office equipment, right? People are going to be home. Kitchen, kitchen's that way, right? Dishware, cookware, food, groceries, Instacart, anybody that delivers groceries into the living room. And so basement, well, we had the treadmill and the Peloton, but and we had some weights. And other, hey, we need more of that stuff because I'm not going to get to go to the gym, right? So I go around and I identify 36 Zoom stop, right? Like that kind of stuff. I identify 36 industries that are going to thrive. That is an evaluation of the offspring. It is not that I'm a genius and understand what's going to happen two months before it happens. No, I would have never thought about that. Focus on the offspring. What else? I get the deliveries. I'm going to have to get deliveries. No. Amazon stocks got to go up. That's pretty easy. What does Amazon need? They need cardboard to deliver the stuff. I go, I buy, I call my broker. We bought up every paper stock we could find that sold on some exchange somewhere in this world, right? Kind of thing. Offspring, the echoes, the ripples. If you're paying attention, just ask yourself the questions and connect the chain and good things will happen. All right, that's number five. We're halfway home. Who's loving this so far? Give me a hey in the chat. I'm loving this. And do me a favor, if you are enjoying this, can you click the little thumbs up button on, on, the, on the YouTube, the little like button and share this? People need help. All right, what's number six? All right. Build MVPs first and methods second. What do I mean by that? Okay, that's sort of 6A. I don't know if I'm going to get to 6B because I'm just taking a little longer than I thought. MVPs, anybody go to the Andy School of Productivity Challenging, right? Has anybody taken that? Or has anybody in my leadership program seen all my productivity and organizational stuff? MVP stands for Minimum Viable Product or Minimum Viable uh, Prototype or 
today at the end, a minimum viable promotion. Uh, so what does that mean? Whenever I do anything, and I will tell you this often, you don't get it until you get into it, right? You got to get into it and be dealing with real live humans and real live bullets and see what's actually happening. You're not going to read it in a book. Google, you can't Google experience, right? You got to build the product and see how they react, so to speak. Well, literally and figuratively. Okay, so everything that I do in my life, I don't blueprint out completely. I blueprint the first piece. I'm going to do a workshop. We're going to teach about resume writing. Let's get one up and running. Now, MVP, I'm going to teach for three days. I'm going to teach whatever I can in the amount of time I can build from today to the date that the workshop is. We're going to build a product. I'm going to see what they like. They're going to tell me what's missing. I'm going to add it later, but it'll be a viable minimum product. There are products I sell done that way. There are promotions I do done that way. Everything in my mind can be iterated, and when you iterate, you improve, but iterating based on real live feedback makes it 10 times better than the person who wants to sit at their desk and analyze everything and waits 10 months to do something that I could put out in 10 days, not because I'm faster, because I'm more willing, okay? Because I'm more willing to what? If you want to hit deadlines, you vary the scope, you don't vary the deadline. You can shrink the scope, hit the date. But the more time you give yourself, number one, there's going to be scope creep, creeping elegance, and you're blueprinting from what? Desk work. You don't have real live feedback. And, and by the time you get 10 months out and you're putting your first product out, I'm on version 20 of mine with real live humans who've told me how to make it better. And I'm able to see that. That's the first part of this. The second part of this is once you start to work it into a process, you can build a structured methodology around it. Let me give you a great example. Any of you, are, any, are there any of you out there that are in my leadership program who have been in it since March 2019? In March 2019, I decided because in, in, in late 2016, I had released my first job search curriculum program, and I had a strategy in 2017, or uh, 20, sorry, 2015, that said, I'm going to start with job search coaching, and then I'm going to work that for a few years, concentrated, and then say three, four years into the process, I knew this, I was going to build a career development curriculum, and I also wanted to have a subscription like a Netflix style teaching component, but job searching is usually a, a transactional act. Once it's fixed, it's fixed. So all those products, as you might know, if you hang around the Milo Academy, we sell them one, one enrollment, you have them for life, right? But I have a leadership, an aspirational coaching that I started in March, 2019. I didn't know what the whole curriculum was going to look like. I just said, oh, what do people have problems with? They need to understand leadership, so I should teach that in the first session. And let's build their confidence because basically if they're confident, they can do anything I'm about to teach them, whatever that's going to be in April and May and June. Had no idea what the curriculum was going to be. So not only did I start that in 2019, and then the next month I did something, and the next month I did something, and those sessions are still in a library that's now five years old. But what did I do? From that, I looked at everything that I knew a leader needed to do or somebody who wanted to live a better career needed to. And I looked at it and I analyzed the bricks before I put together a methodology that I now have been teaching for multiple years, but I didn't put the methodology together first. I put the methodology together after I had some bricks thrown. Now, I'm not talking about go buy a house and have the, you know, don't, don't hire the architect and just have the builder start throwing bricks up. I'm not talking about that. You got to live in the thing. I'm talking about most of what we do, most of us, and I'm speaking of most, I know I don't want a, a doctor operating on me unless they've, right, tried it on enough cadavers and have gone through the proper schooling and everything's been sketched out and hopefully proven and so on. I'm talking about 90% of us and the types of jobs we have and the way that we add value to the world. Much of the time, you want to do this first. The second thing is, in addition to MVPs first, draw conclusions second. A lot of people that I know draw conclusions before they ever try anything. And they're drawing conclusions from things they hear and haven't experienced, things they assume, which are totally incorrect, because they have no experience. 
They haven't even tried it. And what I would also say is the reason that I have been so prolific at being able to produce the right kind of training programs on the job searching and leadership development side is because of the iterative process that I go through that enabled me to draw conclusions based on real life scenarios. And the other thing is, in order to do something of very, very high potency to reach reach real heights, you're going to need a lot of mistakes, you're going to need a lot of iterations, and you're going to have to tinker with a lot of variables, and you can't draw conclusions too quickly because just because something happened once, it could be random, or twice, it could be random. When I tell you that an advertised salary on a job description is not the final say, and you say to me, Andy, I don't believe you, that's right, making it an error without even committing or trying. Or if you say, Andy, I believe you, I'm going to get into the process and I won't give them my salary. And it says 125,000 and we got down to the end and they offered me 125,000 and they wouldn't go any higher. Andy, you're wrong. I would say, no, you hit the one time and you're drawing a conclusion with only so many data points. I do this every day of my life and have for a very long time, right? I'm telling you that in 90% of the situations that won't happen. Three times yesterday that didn't happen, right? I had offers of prepping people and they were exceeding the max salary that was advertised kind of thing. You need to make these errors of commission first. Don't don't try to draw conclusions without getting in motion. It's easier to redirect an object in motion than it is a stationary one. All right, number seven. Well, you know, you know I believe this, I hope, because you because you you come to these shows, I hope, every week. Give much more than you think is reasonable. How could you give that away? Andy, how could you show up every week for an hour and a half, sometimes two hours, and just give complimentary career advice like this? Andy, you you got a three-day workshop coming up. It's nine hours of free teaching. Why would you do that? Because the more I give away, the more that comes back to me. It's a law. It's like a law. I don't know what the exact law is and metaphysically what happens. It just does. Um, here's a here's a here's a little thing that you might not know. In April 2018, that book Interview Intervention that sort of blew out blurred out. Uh, I wrote the book in 2011. It came out in 2012, and in April of 2018, I decided that I wanted everybody in the world to have this book, and I didn't just want them to have the ebook because the ebook sits innocently, quietly, subliminally in an electronic device. I want the book in your house. Now, it's a big ask cuz I'm not a right I wasn't I'm not a well-known author or any of that kind of kind of stuff and that book cost 28.95 retail on Amazon. I got to argue with the publisher at what rate they're going to give me to buy my own book. Because I want to give the book away for free, but I want to ask you to chip in a couple of bucks. And so I argue with them. I got to wrestle the rights. I got to get somebody else to manufacture the book for me. So now I'm thinking, all right, how much is this going to cost me? I got to manufacture the book, which means I got to print the book. Now, if I print a lot of the book, I could probably get the print cost down to about three bucks, maybe four, maybe two. It depends, but you're, that's the neighborhood you're talking. Okay, good. All right, I got to store the thing. When I store it, people want me to pay it to store it, or there's ways to set up these fulfillment services where... We're going to nip you for $3 a book or $4 a book every time we ship one of your books. Great. All right, now I'm up to about seven, eight bucks. I'm just going to ask people for that. Then I send 50% of the interview intervention books that go out off that warehouse, out of that warehouse, go outside the U.S. Now, if I mail it in the U.S., I still have to pick up the the mailing cost, but the first class mail is not too bad. But when it goes to Canada or Perth, Australia, or Zimbabwe, or somewhere in Japan or China, I'm looking at upwards of $23, $30, $34 a book just to ship it to you. Okay, seven bucks, that's what you pay, seven USD. And somebody say, well, hey, don't you get royalties on the book? What about when people buy the book? Won't nobody buy the book anymore? The moment I started offering the book, which still exists, this offer still exists, for $7, to help me pay, when I say it's for the printing, materials and handling, and the warehouse guys, I genuinely mean that. I pay the rest. And we we pay a lot of money every year because thousands of these books go out a month or whatever the number is. And ever since that time, 
all of my sales on all the other stuff has gone up, my royalties, I kid you not, I get a royalty check from that publisher who published that book and The Hiring Prophecies. I get a quarterly distribution from them. My royal, and I don't, I don't live off royalties. My name's not Grisham or Patterson. And, and, and it's, it's this big, except ever since April of 2018, since I've been giving the book away, the royalty check is 10x what it was. And I don't live off that, but the point still stands that if you're worried, if you're worried about giving away things, that's limited, that's limited thinking. There's 8 billion people in this world. No matter how many days a week I talk and for how many hours, not all of them, at least those that are professionals working, are ever going to be able to hear me. I just know that's the juice I'm putting out into the world. That's the energy that goes out there. I have told you, I keep thinking about how can I move the free line. The more I give away, we do three-day shows, four-day shows, five-day shows in a row. We've done six-day shows in a row. The more days I go, the more, the more of you that buy into the programs kind of thing. There's, there's a relationship there. So I want you to think about that. Now, now don't get me wrong. I don't want to talk out of both sides of my mouth because remember, I want you to be judicious with what you, what you allow into your life. I'm just talking about get rid of that limited mentality and think in, in more, more abundant terms, okay? This is a really, really important one. Now, I got, I got, I was, I got, I've got three more of these. The... The eighth one is, this one makes me a little sad when people give up. And you set these big goals, and I don't want you to interrupt yourself. How many of you have set a big goal, have set a big goal, were working your way there and then threw in the towel? How many of you invest in money, stocks, whatever, and then try to trade it out? when you think certain things are going to happen. Now, I'm not, I'm talking about, don't get me wrong, just because I went and bought a few stocks, I don't, I didn't change my strategy. My money went into certain things and it stays there. And I, I write out the market gyrations because of the way I balance my money. But I'm talking about interrupting your goals. Let me give you a story. There's this woman, her name's Jen. I absolutely adore this woman. She was a client as from my executive recruitment days and she had uh, sought my counsel. She was a client, wanted to actually leave the company she was at. She went to another company. I told her I wouldn't go. I told her why. I told her to evaluate these things. And she, did, she went anyway. That's okay. That's her choice. And she lasted about five months. She calls me up. She said, okay, you were right. Can we get together for lunch? I really need your help. No problem. We get together for lunch. Uh, I said, hey, why don't you come and work with me? Now, she was a corporate recruiter, but she had agency-like skills. So for those of you that know the space, I mean, you need to, you need to get on the phone. Now, this is back in the mid-2000s. So it's, it's not uh, – LinkedIn was, was prevalent. Uh, it, it, it wasn't as, as hot as it is now. There weren't as many you know, uh, people on the platform. But I said to her, okay, look, why don't you come and work with me? I will pay you big commissions. I will, I will get you all your searches. You don't have to sell any searches. I will get all the clients, which I already have, and you help me fulfill the searches, and then I'll give you half the fee so she can make a bunch of money. I said, but you got to do me one single favor. It's the only thing I ask. I only have one ask of you. You give it two years. You give it two years. And she looked at me, and like I could see the motor running like, what do you mean? Said, because what's going to happen over the, over the course of the next two years is you got to build your network, which I know you have a network, but you're going to really have to build a different kind of network because we're doing different kind of searches than you did in your, in your corporate days. And the other thing is you're going to go through gyrations where weird things are going to happen because what? You have to make two sales to make one. You got the only product in the world that can say no to a sale. I'm trying to sell something that can say, no, I don't want to go there kind of thing. So a lot of weird stuff is going to happen, and it's going to take you two years for this stuff to kick in. Just, okay, no, okay, all right, you got it. You get my word. Okay, she gets and she starts middle of the, I don't know, fall. Okay, so it's like the fall. She gets in before Christmas, before New Year's. She hits a bunch of 
placements because I had them ready. She got in. She worked it. Boom, boom, boom. She's like, Andy, this is great. Like, I know. Get in. I said, okay, listen, I got a big search for you. We're now, we're, we're midway into, like, we're about a year into her, her tenure, so halfway to the two years. I said, listen, we've got this big search. I, wanna, I, I want you to do it. Okay, I trust you. It's a big fee. And we got to give them three good candidates. We did. They loved us. They wanted to hire. These were all her candidates. She's going to get half this fee. She gets them all in. We go through the process. They wanted to make offers to all of them, but the, the client botched some things up. Turns out they didn't get to hire any of them. It was a terrible situation, but now Jen is deflated. She never recovers from this one particular situation. She keeps going a few more months. She's like, Andy, I can't take this anymore. I can't take the up and down. I know you, I said I'd give you two years, but I got to go. So, okay, I totally support you. I completely understand. As soon as she left, as soon as she left, we placed eight of her people. She'd have made a quarter million dollars in three months or something like that. But she was so close. But because she interrupted herself, she didn't get any of that money because she was not around to collect it. Do you know what I'm saying? If you're in a pit or you're in the dip, as I guess Seth Godin would call it, but you're right there, you're digging, 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 you throw the towel in because you interrupted yourself. And I always say success has its own timetable. If you stick with it, you'll be, you'll be around to see it when it shows up. Okay, so do not interrupt yourself. And then number nine, routines are cool. And the routines are so important and fundamentals are so important to your performance in anything that you do. But what fundamentals and routines also do is they give you a chance to envision and push through in the struggle. Let me give you an example from a recent example. So um, many of you know that I, my part of my morning routine, especially when I have a, a book that I'm writing, is I write for one to two hours every single morning. I don't take any days off. It doesn't make any difference. I don't care what the calendar says. It's Saturday, Sunday, a holiday, or whatever. It makes no difference because I want to be in writing mode at a certain hour at a certain every single day. And and because the routine, what the routine enables me to do is it enables me to show up and and be have a level of consistency. I don't get writer's block. I'm constantly touching stuff. I don't need a break from it. I if my writing isn't as good, it doesn't matter because I'm going to fix it later. But the most important thing is I want to generate word count. But what it gives me a chance is I don't start writing a book and then say, I envision myself standing on some stage as a New York Times bestselling author. I don't do that. I have no control over bestseller lists. They're not even bestseller lists. Uh, that's what makes it even worse. So I'm not going to think about that. I'm going to envision what I'm going to do and how I'm going to react when I'm struggling so that I know how to push through, so that I don't have emotional ups and downs because it's, it's a process. So I wrote for 102 straight days. I had 102 sittings to write a 100,000 word book. That's what I did. And then once I was done, that was it. And then I, I spent the next three weeks making sure everything was consistent and massaged it and stripped things out or whatever I needed to do. And so the routines are really important. Every time I come to a show like this, the, the five minutes before I turn the camera on, I, I mentally prime myself and I say, what kind of person is going to show up, 193 of them at 1149 in the middle of the day, my day anyway, uh, on a Wednesday or a Thursday or a Tuesday or whatever day of the week it is, they need my help. Hold their attention sacred, be empathetic, be appreciative, genuinely care. Um, even though you're going to get asked the same question over and over, that's okay. Maybe they just found you this morning, right, kind of thing. And use it as an opportunity to better package your response. Can you make it better? Can you illustrate it differently? And then when you're done, a routine, I watch the show. I'll watch the show multiple times because I'll be watching it using different lenses to see different things. Did I miss anything? Did I hit my notes? Did I hit the high marks? Did the bombs go off where I planted them? Could I have said that faster? Should I have left that out? Did that confuse them? I mean, I look at all this stuff. Was I empathetic? I mean, all these things. And these routines enable you to do that. If you don't have these routines dialed in, built into your day, not only is your life going to be harder, but I think you're going to you're going to stress more. My keys are always in the tray right over there. 
my money, my wallet, or my, my, I should say my rubber band <laughs> with my credit cards. It's always there. My earbuds are always there. Like I don't, I, everything has a routine to it. The more routines you can get in place, I'm not talking about rigidity. I'm talking about good practices, build systems in your life. It will make your life easier. I always plan in the same two hour block. I don't plan for two hours a day. I plan in the same two hour block each day. I always know between five and seven, I'm going to be doing that kind of thing. So this is, this is really important. And then the last one, I want you to remember this. And I want, I want, this one's going out for anybody who is at a crossroads in the direction that they should take their, their life. Just because you can, doesn't mean you should. So Don't let what you were me- don't let what you can do stand in the way of what you were meant to do. So I could have a much easier life, much easier, if I just went and took a C level position at some company. I could. It'd be a lot easier. I, I could make a lot more money with a lot less hours. Believe it, and that'd be fine. And I could do that. But then all of you wouldn't get this. And all the people that I think I was meant to, to help would not, would not get that. There are a lot of things you all can do. And you stay in jobs you don't like. And you stay in careers you don't like because you feel handcuffed. I'm telling you from an abundance standpoint, there is plenty of money to be made doing something that you love. I'm not saying go follow your passion. I would never do that. That's, that's irresponsible advice. Okay? I am saying... If there is an interest and your why is driving you, because helping people is what drives me more so than anything else, you will figure out a way to earn it. Believe me, there's plenty of money in this world. There really is. So I just, I, 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 I need, I need you no matter what age you are. Okay. It's, if you're still breathing, you can do it. But just because you can doesn't mean you should. And, and just don't let, don't let what you can do stand in the way of what you were meant to do. All right, so let's recap them now that I got my composure back. All right, cut. Get rid of this stuff. Work, work you more. Focus on the constants. What will never change. Listen to only the right people. It's in the ripples. Every event has an offspring. Build yourself some MVPs. Give more than you think is reasonable. How am I doing? (laughs) Try to get this in under 55 minutes. Do not interrupt yourself. Routines are cool. Do what you were meant to do. Do what you were meant to do. All right. If, if you're here with me live, we're going to the chat. If you're watching this on the recording, I will see you next week. But no matter who you are, I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you're subscribed to the station. Please give it a like if you really enjoyed it and share it with people. People need help. Here's to a great 2024. Whenever you're watching this, I hope you really enjoyed it. All right. Now, in the interest, in the interest of, um, in the interest of minimum viable promotions, I want to tell you uh, something. I, it was, um, if you, if you don't know this, I, I wrote three books, 2012, 2014, 2015, they came out. But as I mentioned to you in 2015, I wanted to become a trainer in this capacity. I genuinely felt like it was important to help many millions of people, as many as I possibly could. And in order to do that, I was going to need to change my business from a business to business recruitment firm to a business to consumer type of platform. And I gave myself a few years to do that. Implementing this business has been the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. I have run million dollar, zillion dollar projects. I've helped companies realize billions in revenue. I've managed thousands of people. I've, there are not many things that I have not done. And I'm telling you, this is the hardest thing I've ever had to do. And in order to do that, I, I, I didn't have time to write a book. I couldn't, it took a long time to turn uh, the ship, so to speak. And I went through a huge odyssey, but it was time to, to, to write, to write uh, another book. And this book, The Zebra Code, 
is without question, there is no close second. It is the greatest contribution I have ever created to this, to this world. And I went through the publishing, traditional publishing process. It's a lengthy process. And um, I, I started writing the book on officially on December 3rd of 2022. The book was done in May of 2023. The publisher's been going through its processes. And without boring you with the, the whole you know, schedule on Christmas Day last, last year, 2023, last week, I was in bed with my wife having coffee. She made this delicious pour over coffee. I went downstairs to get the coffee. I climbed in bed with my wife and my three dogs and I, I got my phone out. I got my phone out and we were just kind of sitting there laughing and talking, playing with the dogs you know, going through our social media and, and before we were going to get up and, and do whatever, I'm sure work out or whatever we were going to do. And I started to answer some, some questions on YouTube and on in the Mile Walk Academy because I just like to do that. And somebody asked me a question and I went to Google myself so that I could, I could find the video on YouTube that basically was going to answer the question and I was going to answer the person and say, hey, check this video out. And I discovered that the Zebra Code, my fourth book, was on sale. I think it went on sale that morning. The publisher didn't even tell me. And so so we still have a ways to go because the book is going to be uh, shipped uh, in, well in, at your front door on August 6th, 2024. So I was excited and I, I, I wasn't ready for it to be on sale, but I thought I'd like to have a little promotion to kind of kick off the year, uh, maybe get some people to, to pre-order the book because pre-orders, pre-orders are important. Um, they help your they they help your publisher understand how many books they should print in advance. They help Amazon and Barnes and Noble and Books a Million and all the retail Target, Walmart, all the retailers figure out how many books to to order to have on their on their shelves. This book will be on the shelves and in the warehouses. And so, uh, so it's 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 an exciting time. And so, if if you'd like, if you pre-order this book, I thought, well, I want to motivate you because number one, I want you to I want you to have this book, and I will tell you what the book is about here in a second. But the book will ship in, in August sixth, and and you don't pay anything until the book ships. You just kind of order it, and they got you in the queue, and then they they basically charge your card or whatever in in August when it ships. But um, I was telling you in the in the spirit of of MVPs, what had what had trans what had transpired was I, I built this leadership coaching program. And as I had built it, as I was in motion teaching the lessons of what I thought were important to develop your career and become a leader, I started to see and, and formulate the, the the methodology of how somebody should build skills to elevate their career, and that irrespective of what you did, if you were effectively a white-collar professional, but basically, it doesn't matter. If you work in hospitality or the restaurant, it doesn't make any difference. Basically, how would I go about building skills if I had to do it all over again? And the kind of skills I'm talking about, have you ever heard that expression, it's easier to teach the trade than the traits? If you've heard, if you've heard that expression, what I'm trying to teach you in the Zebra Code are the traits, meaning the foundational career-based skills, what I would call essential skills like communication, influence, focus, productivity, organization, these kinds of things. And I'll show you what's, you know, kind of what kind of lessons are in the book. And so when I wrote the book, I wrote the book about how this methodology came about, what it, what it, what it's all about, why it's necessary how to go through building your career development plan. I give you 15 lessons in the book, which I'm going to show you here in a second. And then I also teach you how to build your own career development plan. So it's it's really, really great. And I thought on, on January uh, 5th, so in, in two days, if you're watching me live, I have my leadership coaching uh, program session. Every month I meet with members of my leadership coaching program. And in January, as we have done the last two Januaries, we work on building our career development plans. So I teach them this methodology. We work on our plans together. I show them what needs to go in the plan and they can start to assemble it. We talked about goal setting in December. So now it's time to start identifying the skills that are required in order for you to build to achieve your goals. So I thought it would be a great opportunity to, if you pre-order the book, 
Um, what, what we will do is if you are not, so there's four scenarios here. If you're not in my leadership coaching program already, there is a monthly subscription for $49 a month. There is an annual subscription that's $297 a year. So that's half the price, right? If you paid about 50 bucks a month, it's about $300 a year if you go month to month. Or if you pay $297, it's about $24 a month, $24.75 or $0.81 cents a day if you pay one time over the course of the year. Now, this is a subscription. So the library is massive. There's a lot of lessons. There's video lessons. There's workbooks. There's all kinds of things to think through the lessons, implement the lessons to build these skills. And if you pre-order the book before Friday and you send us the receipt, so you just email the receipt at support at malwalk.com. If you enroll on the monthly basis, I will give you access to the very complete library for free for the first month. And then if you don't want to stay, you can cancel right? That's a risk I run and you will, you will not be billed. And if you stay, you'll be billed at the regular monthly rate. If you want to join on the annual plan, I'm going to give you $100 off the first year. That's $197 for the whole year to, to have access to all these lessons and also get to join me every month, January through December. We meet about every four weeks to go through let these kinds of lessons to build your career. That's an insane offer in my opinion. Now, I understand some of you might be members already. If you are a monthly member and you've been with me and you've been paying your monthly fee, pre-order the book, send the receipt to Kara. She will give you a coupon to get a month for free. We'll credit you We'll credit you or give you the next month free. If you're already on my annual on my annual plan, we will make sure you get a $100 coupon for your next renewal. So don't worry, we'll, we'll take care of everybody. I'll figure out a way. But but this sweet deal is only good until 11 a.m. on Friday when we're going through the leadership session. Now, if you have any questions, you're welcome to ask me. But here, here's here the book actually um, was number one in the new release uh, on Amazon the day it came out and the day after. And I haven't really I haven't done any promoting of it. So whoever was buying it kicked it up to number one. It's obviously not number one anymore. It's hard to do that with a book that's not gonna come out uh, for eight for eight months. It is, uh, let's see, it's $30. The publisher has told me that is hard and we that's not negotiable with me. I don't get to set that price, but the hardcover, and it's only coming out in hardcover, I'm sure the ebook will be there. Uh, and I'll be doing the audio and all that other stuff, but that stuff's not available just yet. And then, and then, just to give you an idea, uh, if you want to check out what's in the leadership uh, coaching program, you can access this page. It goes through all of the stuff that's inside and the kinds of lessons that I go through. You can learn a lot more about the program and the methodology. I am going to show you a couple things really quick. There's a ton of bonuses and great, great courses. Uh, we are meeting on Friday to go through our planning. And to give you an idea of what I'm covering on Friday, so this is what I'm going to be talking about, the methods and practices, the eight components that go into the plan. I do have an assessment. You can rate your skills, how to identify your goals and what skills coincide with helping you achieve those goals. We're going to talk about calendar and planning and how you do that. We're going to talk about picking coaches. Obviously, I'm one of your coaches, but you're going to need other coaches. What lessons you need to get, those kinds of things, the tools, the metrics, because you got to know how to measure yourself. Lots of times people are not measuring themselves correctly. How to gauge your progress. It's really a lot of fun stuff. There's the zebra code. Don't forget to, to grab that. And if you're wondering what I, what the methodology evolved into, this is the way if I, I thought back to my 35-year career and I thought about what are the skills that I want to be building in the order in which I want to build them, but first, what is it that I'm trying to accomplish? Let's think about that first. And I think that everybody... Everybody needs to be a producer, and it doesn't matter if you're an individual contributor or you're a manager. There are certain production-based skills that you need to operate effectively. Oop, sorry. And, and then you become more of a communicator. How do I use communication skills? 
uh, listening, speaking, presenting, and those kind of things to interact with others, to build relationships, and then take it to the next level. How do I use my communication skills to actually influence the outcomes in the world and people? And then the development of other people and on your way to visionary, you might not be able to see what that says up at the top, but that's creating needle moving ideas, a truly being a trendsetter. And so I identified this methodology. There are 46 skills that go along with it. And to give you an idea of what those skills look like, focus, integrity, habits, willpower, energy, confidence, and so on, self-awareness and productivity, these are at the producer level. So even if you're a CEO of a Fortune 500 company, you need to understand how to do this. Have you ever been taught how to focus? Have you ever been taught how to make decisions or, or, or be patient or self-aware? Truly, like that's what the lessons do. Now, the red is what's inside the zero code. So there are chapters or partial chapters allocated to addressing five skills at the producer level. And then the communicator, empathy, right, listening, speaking, writing, storytelling, building trust, relationship building, reacting. These lessons are already in the leadership library. But now the red, that's in the that's in the in the zebra code, but there are basically four different uh, ch- uh, chapters of lessons in the communicator section of the book, but you can see the kind of, of lessons that are addressed in the book, and then influencing, um, mastering your craft, being able to influence, putting to be- uh, together compelling arguments, networking, I would also call relationship building, and those kinds of things in the influencing section. The book nearly matches the methodology uh, exactly, but I had to take a few liberties because of its because of the literary nature. And then developing, I talked about managing people, motivating, coaching them, and all that. But inside the leadership library, there's hiring, building teams, promoting culture, managing risk, and all that good stuff. And then from a visionary perspective, it's about idea gen and diverse thinking. So what's in red, this is all I'm going to show you today. But um, in, in what's in red is inside the book. Like I literally have chapters and, and, and I made reference to the fact that, well, you know what? The publisher put me on a word count. And so if it was me, I'd have loved to give you an opus with 46 lessons in it. But, you know, it would have been, <laughs> would have been that thick. So, so that's, that's my offer today. And if you've got any questions, you just email support at mylewalk.com. But do me the favor. If this is something you're interested, or even if you just want to support me, even if you don't want to get in the leadership program, I would genuinely appreciate it. Pre-orders are a big, they're a big deal in the publishing industry. Not only um, does it help guide us uh, from an expense standpoint and a production standpoint, but it it, it also does help the, the, the rankings and those kind of things for when the book is, is actually released. So I do hope you participate. I'm going to have a book launch team. I'm in it. There's so many things that I'm going to be doing over the course of the, the eight months. I didn't even think the book was going to be on sale, which is why this is kind of a quick and dirty uh, MVP type of promotion. The session on Friday is 11 a.m. Central Standard Time. I think somebody's asking. And the other thing is, please realize to get you the coupon to get your $100 off, or to get your $49 off if you're a um, non boot camper member, or $39 off a month if you are a boot camper member, is a manual process for me and Kara. So please email us at support at malwalk.com if you have any if you have any questions. Can I can I I just you 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 can't know how excited that I am to bring this to you. And I'm gonna be really doing backflips in August. Uh this is a book project that started years ago. And so I, it hasn't really hit me. Um, I mean, and I was surprised. And the, and the people, my, my managing editor and my traffic cop, my quarterback who expedites the process, and my acquisitions editor, were, they were all on vacation. And I'm like, hey, the book's on sale. Can I start pushing this, you, you know, kind of thing? And, 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 and so, you know, it's just, like I said, I threw together an MVP offer. 
and I whipped it up and got some emails in order. And if you need to see any of this in writing, like if it's, hey, I'd really love to understand this a little better. Kara, I think wanted to send you, uh, you wanted to send them to the LinkedIn newsletter where I think I had some detail. I did send this to you in an email form. If you're on my email list today, I'm gonna be sending it tomorrow morning as well. And then if you're in the leadership uh, coaching program, I'm gonna be seeing you on Friday. So fun. And those are awesome sessions. It's uh, We do them on Zoom. It's recorded if you can't make it. There's always workbooks and thought provokers and a challenge. And this one's a little different because we're working the whole, you know, kind of the whole the whole year at one time. But it's really, it's 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 really, really great. And generally, generally speaking, and actually this is pretty consistent throughout the year, we generally meet on Fridays. Uh, generally at 11 a.m. Central Time. That's those little live shows. But if you can't make it, you know, because I mean, only a fraction of the people who are in the in the program in the membership can actually come to the live shows. So, so a lot of people catch the replays on the recordings. I, I make the recordings available the very same day. There is an absolute ton in the library. And while I, you know what, I didn't even plan to show you this. I almost feel compelled to to give you an idea of 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 what of what this looks like inside just so you have an understanding of the organization of the program it when you when you join you get access to all of this so so like the skill building stuff that we're doing um this this friday is the newer newest iteration of of the skill building roadmap and then all of the things in the leadership library are organized by topic uh so you can you can kind of get a sense of of what's in here. There's organization and productivity. There's a lot more of this in different training programs as well. Success and high performance, right? Leadership itself, confidence, making great decisions, goal setting, uh, building your, your trade, everything from performance reviews and all of that good stuff. And then the communication one is, is really quite large. Um, communication in general, dealing with difficult people, uh, how do you communicate as a leader? Listening, persuading, how to get what you want from people. I mean, these are these are you know. And then we start getting into some of the nitty gritty of business concepts, building a business case, presenting those kind of things, relationships, leading others, building your brand, networking, building trust, empathy, d diverse thinking, diversity. It's a diversity session, and then building teams. You get you get the idea. It's pretty pretty full and. If you just pre-order the book, you can try it for a month for free. I mean, that's the deal. You don't, number one, you don't even pay for the book now. And number two, you don't pay for the month now. And so you can, you know, you can try it, see if you like it. It's, it's essentially a free trial if you want to go on the month. But I'm not going to offer, well, after Friday, that's it. So I'm not going to credit you back and you say, hey, I changed my mind. Any of that. Make up your mind and go. It, commit to 2024, commit to a year, give yourself a chance to actually give yourself some time. Don't do what Jen did in my story and bug out early, right? Kind of thing. All right, let's do, okay, you got you got the, if you're wondering how you receive the, the rebates, you just email us your a Amazon receipt or Barnes & Noble receipt, or I prefer you do it on Amazon because it's nice to concentrate, but that's okay. Um, you just email support at malwalk.com. Kara's gonna send you the link or she'll send you the coupon that you need in order to get that. And then Kara, let's let's head over to uh, whatever uh, questions that we, or comments we have. What does the zebra code mean? Okay, so it is about, um, I have been talking for a long time and teaching the concepts of be a zebra, not a horse. So if you wanna be a standout professional, right? Kind of heads up. Right, the zebra stripes are going to stand out as in a in a in a crowd of well, unless you're living in Africa where there's zebras everywhere, but in the U.S. where I am, zebras are really rare and you only see them in a zoo. So, so that's that's the concept: is how how are you differentiating yourself? If you do what the book says, I guarantee you're going to be a zebra. You will not be like other people. You just simply won't. If you implement the book, remember the book is nice. You can read it and just read it and have fun and learn the concepts. But if you work the book, like actually do the skill development, do the, every every chapter, every one of those red items has thought provokers, a challenge, and everything designed to, 
help you implement the skill. And then, Sonia, are these 10 tactics listed in the book? They are somewhere in the book, for sure, 100%. John Holmes, time zone for 11 a.m. deadline on Friday, 11 a.m. Central. However, please understand, Kara and I need to be at the show at 11, and I'm prepping and going through my routine, talking about my leaders and thinking about my leaders and all their beautiful faces that I'm about to see on the Zoomer and all that good stuff. So, you know, it would be better if you were not, you know, waiting till 1059 because it's possible that you, you know, Kara will be in the session with, and I'm going to be talking. So, uh, all right, questions. Tommy O, you, are you a boot camper? Awesome. Speaking of speaking, what do you think of Toastmasters? Here's what I, here's what I think. I think now let me let me preface this by saying I've not been to Toastmasters. And I think that when you when you take schooling, okay, like if you want to go and pay for a master's or an MBA or or all those things, I think that kind of schooling, while valuable, is not from an ROI perspective in a professional world, gonna yield what it's gonna cost. However, however, there are other great benefits of formal education. Um, you're getting exposed to concepts you might not other, otherwise be exposed. You're getting some basic understanding, but you're never gonna really know it until you what, actually implement it professionally. You're also me meeting people and, and building a network, and those are very valuable, and it's impossible to quantify that stuff. Now. When you start to take adult learning and go into different kind of, like my leadership program, for example, or a Toastmasters or something like that, if you feel like you're going to get to go and practice and meet people who are working on the same goals, and my, my, my wife, I don't know if this is a perfect analogy, it just hopped into my head, uh, has really gotten into running in the past six months. And one of the biggest things that has helped her is she goes to run club on Saturday, rain, shine, snow. She's got a coach. The coach goes. I mean, like it's the camaraderie is there and it's really nice to be among it. And in a Toastmasters environment, I'm guessing that's the case. Now, I say to people, always give it a try. See if you like it. See if you're benefiting. But, but. You can go to all the Toastmaster sessions and do all the work and whatever. If you are not practicing it and not, not truly practicing it, you are not going to get better. True, true story here. This talk, and I, I've, I've given you maybe this example before. This talk, the whole talk, whatever I just went through, that I talked for an hour, took 12 minutes to put together. 12. I know that because I started at exactly 2.00 and I was done at 2.12, kind of on the day I did this. And I didn't rehearse the whole thing and I certainly didn't spend an hour prepping it. But I gave it. That took an hour. I'm going to watch it. That'll take another hour. I'm going to evaluate it. I'm going to rewatch it. I'm going to evaluate it again. And I'm going to rewatch it. And I'm going to evaluate it again. So I'm going to spend three hours evaluating something that took me 12 minutes to put together, maybe 10 minutes to prep just a few of the lines, like I wanted to make sure I had the right examples, and then an hour to deliver. So I'm spending three times or two, two, two X to three X the amount of time evaluating what I'm doing so that I could get this much better. This is, I've done over a thousand live, literally over a thousand, 1K live shows. So I'm looking to get this much better and I'm evaluating myself every single week, actually every single day, because I even evaluate the shorts that come out that Kara cuts up and puts out on YouTube land and in Insta land and LinkedIn land. And right, I'm I am obsessed with the evaluation process. If, if you are practicing, taking Toastmasters, practicing speaking, doing your projects or whatever, if you are not putting the time in to evaluate and improve it, you're not going to get better. You won't. Uh, Risa, how do you explain cutting out toxic work environment to a prospective employer? Okay, it depends what's toxic about the environment. The number one, number one, there are actually, contrary to what people think, very few truly toxic environments. There are a lot of poorly run companies or there are a lot of, of bad eggs, let's just say bad 
people that are not contributing to a healthy work environment that then serve as, as something of a cancer inside the teams. It depends what level of toxicity you're talking about because um, sometimes the best answer is to just leave and go to an entirely new environment. That and it. So I'm going to say there are degrees. Number one, here I'm not going to tell you what to do. But I'm going to I'm going to offer you, Risa, the factors I think you should consider. Where are you in the chain? Are you on the bottom and you don't have as much influence? and you only control your own little work and your own little fiefdom, and you're going to have to deal with this, that's rough. Are you in the middle? Can you influence your team members and any support staff or whatever? Can you do, are, have you been there long? Do you have credibility? Is your work stellar? Are they going to listen to you? Can you approach them in a positive manner to talk about, right? Are you at the top, and are you dealing with individuals that are on your support team that are are being toxic. Now, it depends where you are in all of this and to the extent in which you can influence it is going to dictate what I'm going to do and the dis meaning the action I'm going to take to try to make it better or the decision to to leave it. I am of the opinion that your happiness is the number one thing that you should focus on because I don't I don't subscribe to that expression that that life is short because life is long if you live it the right way. And I certainly don't subscribe to that expression, well, you only live once. No, you only die once, you live every day. I'm not gonna spend any of my days in places that I don't like doing things I don't like because I feel held hostage by whatever that is. I. I don't care if your parents want you to be an accountant. I don't care if you're this, if, you, if you've been at this company X years. If it's time to go, it's time to go. This thing up here and this thing in here are the most important things for you to protect. And so it's never as simple as how I would approach it. There are so many factors that are going to determine the steps I'm going to take. I hope I gave you a few there to consider. I wish you a lot of luck. Um, let me see. You're asking me a question about how about when you get interrupted by work environment related to issues. Um, the interruption that I'm talking about is major, major multi-year goals. I'm not talking about on a given day when somebody interrupts your work day. There are different ways I'm going to handle an, an, a daily interruption. I'm talking about sticking with your lo long, long-term goals and making sure that if you're working towards something, anything worth doing in your life that's going to have an impact is going to take a long time. It is. And accept that and enjoy the enjoy the journey as as much of a platitude as that might sound like or as cliche as that sounds. If you don't enjoy the grind, you're never going to have the shine. So so I just want you to think of it that way. So when you're when you're talking about getting interrupted by your boss, my first reaction is people who don't feel the repercussions of the interruption will repetitively do it or can do it until they feel the the repercussions. You if I'm getting interrupted by a boss, the number one, I want you to use your head. I want you to understand who's the boss, what's the relationship, why are they interrupting you? Maybe there is something urgent and all of that is a okay. And interruptions I'm not saying are evil. If you're telling me that I'm constantly getting interrupted by my boss who is not being thoughtful about the amount of time I need to spend to get him or her what they need in the time they've asked for it and so on, they need to feel the repercussions of their interruption. Meaning, if somebody comes into my office, you're my boss. I say, okay, hey, you know, hey, hey, boss, Andy, um, if you want me to stop doing this right now, here's what that means. Your, your choice is, Right, and you pick the flowery language you want to use. But basically, I won't have that report to you by the end of the day. I won't have all the numbers for you by this or that. This, I'm gonna, if I have to stop this, it's going to cost me an extra hour to start it up, which I, I won't be able to do until tomorrow or whatever. They need to feel it. So, so let them decide. You are now giving them a choice. Some of you think, well, Andy, isn't that talking back to your boss? No, that's giving your boss a choice. Which would you prefer? Now, some of you are going to say, well, Andy, my boss is such a knucklehead that, you know, he's going to say, no, I need you to stop what you're doing and I need you to stay an extra hour to get it done. You know what? Sometimes you got to do that. 
But if it's an all the time thing and you're getting frustrated, again, I'm going to go back to see previous answer. If you need to leave, you need to leave kind of thing. Then you decide and you go. Uh, let's see. Comment. Oh, Lashon, what's up? This is why I just stepped out on faith. As of December 29th, 2023, I resigned from a very toxic environment. I believe there is so much more for me, and I am I am waiting on that uh, and do what I am meant to do. I am wait. I'm so proud that you stood your ground, knew your value, and weren't willing to put up with that anymore. I'm telling you. Not just her, but any of you. Know your value. It comes from here and here. Do not worry about your situation. Meaning, Andy, I'm unemployed. That's a situation. Andy, I'm 63. That's a situation. That, all that is. Believe me. It, it's true. You, there are, those are not insurmountable problems. And you being unemployed has nothing to do with your value. It's just you happen to be unemployed. Kind of thing. Believe me. I'm, I'm seeing it every day. I'm coaching three to four people a day now. It's calmed down a little bit since the beginning of December, where it's four to five people a day every day. And so I'm seeing this with what people are negotiating for, how much they're exceeding the maximum pays that are advertised. It, people are unemployed. People are, I mean, it's, it's, it's crazy what's going on in the market right now. Have faith is, is good. Uh, new life creator. I think that's, is that Stacy? Is that your handle? I think that's you. Love the cover design. Thank you. Um, the name of the book took about eight months and the cover, uh, took one iteration because I was so anal about coloring, formatting, edging, uh, subtleties. <laughs> I don't mind to say, <laughs> thank you. Felicia. Uh, had two to three interviews with six real estate developer uh, companies, including CEOs, through boss hunting method for executive position. Jobs now on hold due to economy rates. How do I stay top of mind? Uh, my my recommendation is I, do, I still... Oh wait, number one, I totally appreciate that you're in motion. Number two, I would get on top of mind of someone else. Honestly, it... I wouldn't be chasing these uh, six real estate development companies. If they say everything's on hold, I would look at, are there other avenues in real estate? Are there tangents to real estate, different types of companies that integrate with real estate organizations? And I would keep boss hunting. Be consistent. Stay in your routine. Wait, true, true story. Do you know what I spent the first hour of my workday doing today? So not the focus, not the meditation, not the excellence planning, but once I get to the desk and then I think about, okay, what, you know, what was on, you know, what's on my, on my agenda every morning, boss hunting for testimonials. So I, you know, I sent Ariana Huffington an email this morning. I sent some other people. I don't know a, an email this morning asking them if they want to give me testimonials for my book. Maybe she will. Maybe she won't. Doesn't matter. They go out five a day, five a day, five a day. There are people that I do know. Hey, I'm on the clock. I got to have the testimonials by, by January, end of January to stay in the good graces of the publisher, right? They were typesetting. The interior treatment's being done. I want, they want the, they want these for the back cover and they want them for the inside treatment. And so I'm, I'm, I'm testimonial hunting. Routine, five go out. And, and, and I thoughtfully prepare each one of them according to Andy's best networking principles and email copywriting that I've given you somewhere out into internet's land. Stay in your routines. How are we, how we doing? You guys enjoying this? If you are, please click the like button, share it. Please pre-order, please. <laughs> it is... I just can't wait till some, you're holding the book. I just can't. But another lesson, mini lesson within a lesson, never wish time away, right? Enjoy the journey. So we're going to take the next seven months and we're going to enjoy the heck out of giving you all the lessons and all the things I could do to make the leadership program better and the book better and the promotion better and the, and the facilitation around it and all the stuff that comes in the pre and in the launch and in the wake of it. All right, let's see. What do we got here? Sonia, 
you are a boot camper. Uh, potential teammate looks friendly, uh, has their Gmail on LinkedIn, found the boss, but can't find the work email, but posted job to their, both posted job to their LinkedIn. Whom do I target? So I, if, if you got a potential teammate, go to the teammate and because you said the person looks friendly and say, um, Hey, I, I noticed you posted this. I, I hope you don't mind. I saw your email address. I thought I would email you directly and then go with the teammate technique, which you have. And then in there, how do you like it? This and that, get a response. When you respond, say, Hey, I noticed, um, the, I noticed this person I'm assuming might be your boss also posted this. Uh, I, I, I thought it would be better if I got the information from you and how you like working there and with this person, right? Like do that. And then if you have a little exchange, one, two taps, don't make it real long. Say, hey, listen, all right, this is great. I think I want to apply or send the boss a message. Before I do that, um, do, before I just do that, is there any benefit to you referring me? You don't even have to say recommending me. Just say referring me and go that route and try that. Sonia, again, how to phrase message to teammate boss for multiple openings on team. Uh, don't do that. Just say, I notice you have a few openings. I want to join in whatever capacity I can add the most value. Let them sort it out. The more you direct in your, in your emails, the more confined their thinking will be. So uh, it's important. It really is. By the way, I just yesterday or day before, what day are we on? I don't, I don't even know what the day of the week it is. But I did a, a, a case study with Jess. So I've got some new case studies that will be coming out week after next. And, um, and she said in her, in her package, in the, in the case study with me, she says, and, and listen to Andy when he says, make sure you note for this or any other role or in any capacity or whatever, it really works because – she had recruiters saying, we want you to interview for multiple of these if you're open to it kind of thing. So like, you want to make sure that you're you're doing that. Uh, by the way, wait, real quick announcement. Since I, I, I know I was talking a lot about the book and I was talking a lot about the leadership program because that's coming up day after tomorrow. But uh, but the next week I'm back for live office hours. The following week uh, is the interview intervention mini camp. Maybe Kara can drop that in the chat as well. Please make sure to sign up. Uh, for that's a three-day event, January 16th, 17th, and 18th, every day at 11 a.m. Central Standard Time. There, uh, there will be live. It's probably about it's three. At last last year when we did the mini camp for the interview program, uh, we were we did over three hours every day. It's going to be three hours. It's 11 to two. Mark your calendars. If you can't make it, the replays will be available for a few days, but nobody gets those replays. It's I'm not cutting those replays. It's just they're up and then they're down. So so if you want to see them, make sure you sign up. If you're in the job search coaching program, don't worry. You have the incomplete 30-hour interview intervention training program, the 10th anniversary one. But it's really going to be a lot of fun. Uh, Steve Johnson, what do you think about job scan? So I like the concept of job scan. Now I want to preface this a couple a couple of ways. I used to be affiliated with JobScan. And not that this matters to you, but they became incredibly hard to work with. So I just said, I screw it. I don't want your money. I'm not going to recommend you. And that's okay. Uh, but if you but you asked me what I think of the of the program, and I think I would take my resume. Even if I wasn't going to apply online, meaning I'm not going to send it through the applicant trashing system, as you know, I call the ATS. That's my endearing name for it. I want you to put your resume together for a human. If you want to run it through JobScan and check the low-hanging fruit and, and look at the keywords and just see if you can tighten it up, great. Go do that. One iteration, that's it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't spend a lot of money on that. I wouldn't. I just don't think most of you are not going to find your job by applying online. You're going to find it via networking. I have the statistics year over year, market over market to prove that. So so it's, it's and by the way, just because you don't have a network doesn't mean you can't generate a network. So even if you go cold, that's still networking. If you're, if you're emailing bosses, that's networking. 
Yes, you're trying to get them to invite you onto their team, but that's still networking. What Sonia was talking about with a potential teammate, that's networking, even though you don't have them in your network yet. So I think it's okay. I would make one run at it. That's it, not even two. I would make the adjustments and go. Uh, let's see, Steven, how you doing, buddy? Um, boot camper, should I wait for buddy to introduce to a target boss he knows that is at a target company? Uh, yes, I don't care if it's a week or two weeks. You're always, 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 but now you said it's a buddy and you said to introduce to the target boss. That means that your buddy knows the target boss and can email that person and say, Hey, my awesome friend Steven is a you know is interested in connecting with you he's got a great background here's his resume blah 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 that's what I would do I would not I would not apply and I would not send the boss a message I would always always pick the referral Steven Johnson uh I'm just starting my job search where do I start not to be funny my job search coaching program honestly I have a lot of videos on YouTube I do they're all they're all there for you to see but there is no organization, no packaging, no complete depth, all the tools, online support, live group coach, private live group coaching, premium group coaching that you can get. And it's on sale right now. The interactive service package is on sale. It's on sale through January 23rd. So I didn't even talk about that today. That's where I would start. However, if you're not going to wait, I would start in the program and I would go just go through it in order. Because it's do this first, do this second, do this third. It's optimized to go in the right sequence. A lot of people job search out of order and get poor results. If you don't want to, I have a video on YouTube about how to start your job search in the right place. Start there. There's a literally a video, how to start your job search in the right place. Start, start there. Uh, let me see. Oh, God, folks, I got to get running. I really do. I hate to do this, but I, I, I'm going to be late for my coaching sessions this afternoon. Okay, I absolutely love this. I really, 159 of you still here. I really, really appreciate all of you uh, showing up each week. I'll see you next next Thursday. We're just going to have a straight q and I'm just going to take your questions. And then the following Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I'm live. Um, I'm I'm. I'm doing some kind of live group coaching, I think, 11 times in, in, in January. If you're, if you're a, in the job search coaching program or leadership program, you're going to see a lot, of, a lot of live coaching. And so I hope you're, you're with me for every minute of that. I do hope that you pre-order the Zebra Code. It would mean the world to me, but I really think it will hugely benefit from you. I do want to give you a token of my appreciation with either $100 off uh, the, it's the first year. So it's a $297 subscription, but I'm going to give you 100 bucks off the first year. Or I'll give you the free month, and then, then it'll renew at 49 bucks. or if you're a boot camper, 39 bucks if you're on that rate. And um, I just I, I, I hope you share the link around social media. Let people know the book's available. I don't want to hit you over the head with it every single week, but uh, and I know it's, it's still eight months away, but, but a lot of these lessons are already in the leadership program. And if you join me on Friday, you're going to get you're going to get to put the plan in place and you're going to have the, 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 the resources, the videos, the workbooks, the lessons in order to make it happen. Here's to having a great 2024. Thanks for making the great show, the great, the first show so great. Everybody have a great, have a, uh, a great week, a good new year, and I'll see you. I'll see my leaders on Friday. Take care.